Hey guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about my daily routines and kind of loose schedule with two kids because specifically this stage where I have a toddler that naps once a day and a nine month old that naps twice a day, I was very scared of it because they're on opposing schedules, but I found ways to you know, overlap some naps, get some downtime myself, and not just be overwhelmed by children all day. Finding a daily routine that works for us has been so important for my mental health, especially since the last two years, I've felt very lost in motherhood. And now that I feel like I have a bit of a grasp on it, I know that a lot of my contentment in my day to day comes from these little consistencies that help me create some peace in the chaos of two children. <laughs> and that's also why I'm excited to share today's sponsor, BetterHelp, so that you can also learn to be your best self. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it is 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist in their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's text, chat, video, or phone call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions whenever it's convenient for you. And of course, if your therapist is not the right fit for you, you can always switch to a new therapist with no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality that you would expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist that is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash embers and ash. That's better h-e-l-p.com slash embers and ash. And I've also linked that in the description below. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring today video. Now let's get into my daily routine. All right, so the mornings are always a little different because we have room sharing going on and Finn's still, you know, a baby and teething. There's usually tears at night. I have been up a lot during the night lately. So the morning you can either expect one of the children in my bed, one of the children in the pack and play in our room. Rarely are they both in the same room by morning time, but we're working towards that again. If you're also room sharing or planning on room sharing with your kids, it is really nice having the pack and play in our room because they won't both nap at the same time in the same room. So that's why that's there. And also for these nighttime issues, because if one kid's screaming, the other one doesn't wanna hear that or will be woken up by it. So it's just easier for me to remove one of the children. Again, hopefully just temporary fix. But anyways, one of the children will wake me up and I will get started usually by making myself coffee, pretty typical. It's nice when Finn is the first one up because it's a little bit less chaotic, but I have really been prioritizing getting my coffee in. I feel like at this stage of life, it's pretty easy. Just Rook and Finn can entertain themselves, or if it's just Finn, he's pretty self-sufficient first thing in the morning, you know, after he's breastfed versus in other stages, like when I just had one one-year-old, I remember it felt impossible to get a coffee in, but either way, I get my coffee in, and by the time that's done, usually both the children are awake. I try and get breakfast in as soon as possible, one, because Rook will be crying for it, but also I feel like I can put it off, and then it's already time for Finn's first nap, and I screwed up because he hasn't had his breakfast yet. Breakfast for them usually consists of like random things thrown together, charcuterie style. Sometimes I'll cook, usually I don't like to. So like yogurts, fruit, um, I'll boil eggs or fry up some eggs. What else do I do? Yeah, I just try and keep a stock of healthy, easy foods to put out for breakfast because otherwise it can feel too overwhelming. You guys know I don't like cooking. And I will myself have breakfast at the same time as them because it, it works out pretty well. I'm a creature of habit for breakfast. <laughs> I I switch like my meals out every few months, but right now I pretty much gravitate towards yogurt and granola or toast with butter and honey. It's just easiest for me to have those things stocked so I always know there's something for me to eat and I don't care so much that it's the same thing every day. Once breakfast is done, I get into cleaning mode. I do think it's important to for your children to see you cleaning during uh, awake time, not just during nap time, because I don't know if this is true, but it feels like maybe they just would expect that the house is always clean and they don't see the work that goes into it. 
Anyways, so during this time after breakfast, the boys will play together. Um, they're at a really cute age where they're playing really well together. Sometimes Rook gets a little bit aggressive or just like too forceful because he doesn't realize that Finn is still fragile. <laughs> but either way, they have a lot of fun together. I clean up after breakfast, clean up anything from the day before, you know, regular cleaning duties. And then I put Finn down for his first nap around nine o'clock, 9.30, depending what time he woke up. If he woke up at six, then we're definitely doing like nine. If he wakes up at seven, 7.30, then we'll push it to 9.30. With Rook at this age, I used to do 10 o'clock naps. So 10 till 12. But if I do that now, then I won't get any overlap for a nap time. So I do have Finn on a schedule of an earlier nap time so that things work out better later in the day. So I'll breastfeed Finn, put him down for a nap in either room. Sometimes I put him in our room, sometimes I put him in his own room. Kind of depends what I'm planning on doing during nap time. Like if I'm cleaning my room, then obviously I don't want him in there. If I'm doing a toy rotation, then I don't want him in his room, you know? And this is when Rook usually gets his screen time for the day. There is some flexibility in the schedule, right? Like if it's a really nice day and I know that we're going out after Finn wakes up, then I'll usually do outside time then. It's nice that it's one-on-one -on -one time with Rook. But if I have a lot of things that I need to get done, then that is when I do screen time for him so that I can get my work done, like emails, editing, or if there's a project around the house that needs to get done, it's nice having that time slot to do it. And I try and limit his screen time to an hour to an hour and a half and everyone's happy. <laughs> this is also when I like to go out and putter around the garden. I can do that when the boys are outside with me, but obviously it's a bit more interrupted. So even if it's just me walking around and looking at everything in the peace of no one else around, that's really nice. You know, I keep the sliding door open. I can hear everything that's happening and I'm only out there for a little bit, but it just, it's really good for my soul to be able to go and view all of the hard work I've been putting in or pull a couple weeds or add a bit of water, whatever it is. It's um, very life-giving for me. So if Finn goes down for his nap at nine o'clock, then I try and wake him up at 10.30. Sometimes we'll push it till 11, but I don't like to because again, that pushes back the second nap in the day. But it is best when he gets an hour and a half to two hours of a nap. So you know, there's a balance there. So at 10.30 slash 11 o'clock, that's when I leave the house if I am leaving the house. For example, grocery shopping, that's when that happens. Grocery shopping days are always so chaotic because I come back right at lunchtime and the boys are starving. I'm trying to unpack groceries. It's a lot, but obviously it's fine. If we're not going out, like I said, that's when we'll do outside time or I don't know if it's raining, we'll play together. Usually if it's raining, we'll leave the house, kind of break up the day. And again, it's good for my mental health to not be inside all day. So even if we're just running out to a store to kill some time, that's good too. So Brooke used to take his nap at 12 o'clock. Now that he's older, you know, he's coming on three, it's really easy to push his nap back to one. And that again, works better for the overlapping of naps. So we'll do lunch at around 1230. Usually I give the boys some sort of leftover from dinner the night before. I again, rarely cook things because it's too much or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's a great go-to, but usually it's leftovers and I don't eat lunch with them because th again, this time of day feels the most chaotic trying to get everything wrapped up for the kids to take their naps. And I specifically don't want to have to be tying up chores during their overlapped nap because I want to be doing things that uh, either fulfill me or getting work done. I don't want to have to be doing chores during that time. So the kids have eaten, cleaned them up. Rook goes down for his nap at one o'clock or he usually starts off his quiet time and like an hour in or a half hour in, he'll take his nap. Finn will stay up with me and this is when we get our one-on-one -on -one time, which is really nice because that's pretty rare these days. So we'll play together, you know, just hang out as you do with a baby. So if he woke up at 10.30, then three hours later, he'll be going down at 1.30 for his nap. And like I said, Rook will usually play for a little bit before he falls asleep. So usually they fall asleep around the same time. And it is so nice. <laughs> Again, I was so scared of this time period being no nap overlap, just from what I had heard from other moms with a baby and a toddler. 
And yeah, this is the most important part of my day because it is when I really get to decompress and focus on things for myself, whether that be YouTube work or going out in the garden, or that's when I eat my lunch. It's nice and peaceful. I get to eat on the couch if I want. It's just very important for me to have this time of day. Now that does kind of mess with Finn's bedtime, not mess with, but it affects his bedtime schedule. So if he goes down at 1.30, he'll sleep till 3.30 usually. So then three hours later is 6.30, which is quite early for bedtime for us. And that also leads to earlier wakings in the morning, but it's kind of like, there has to be sacrifice somewhere and I would rather have that overlapping nap in the afternoon and be up a little bit earlier in the morning. So what I also can do is if he wakes up at 3.30 and I want him to sleep a little longer, I try and get all my tasks done during those two hours, right? And then I'll go and lay in bed and nurse him back to sleep and I get a bit of a rest as well. If I was, you know, busy working on things, it's nice that I get some rest. He gets to sleep a little longer and that pushes his bedtime back. Rook will sleep usually till four. If he's in his room at one, falls asleep at 1 30, two o'clock, usually sleeps till four. Um, and so both the boys are waking up around the same time, which is also convenient. And that's kind of the end of my day, just in that Josh gets home from work at 4 30. So we all just kind of play together for that half hour, hour, whatever it is, or I'll start making dinner and the boys will play together. It really depends on the day at that point because the evenings can vary a lot. So yeah, I hope this is helpful for you guys if you're also struggling with finding a routine that works for you. Again, it's taken me quite a few years to feel like I found my stride in motherhood and this could just be like a temporary phase because it's ever changing. But as of right now, things are going super well. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.